brother, I love you with all my heart and all my soul, and I will follow you even unto death, my friend. As you follow Jesus, my friend, as long as you follow Jesus, I am with you, brother. And as long as you follow Jesus, and I know you will, even unto death, brother. Amen. Stuff like that makes me nervous. <laughs> God help us. Who's he talking about? <laughs> if you want to know the real story, talk to my wife. <laughs> Praise God. Well, saints, yeah, yeah, amen. Saints, I'm, uh, what a joy to be with you at this time. Uh, you know, we came from... Waco, Texas, you know, some from Michigan, North Carolina, Las Vegas. But wow, what a blessing to come to Kissimmee for such a time as this. Yeah. And we are seeing evidence of God's Spirit at work. You know, a lot of times we want to serve the Lord, amen? But there's an old statement, you know, go to the spout where the glory's coming out, amen? <laughs> In other words, we just don't want to make up work. We want to see where God is at work and join Him. Amen? And to be a part of what God is doing. And it's been our blessing to be with you saints. And we are here for one reason. We want to, we want to serve the church here in Kissimmee. Uh, you're facing a real monster. A real threat to your community. And we have been up against this enemy for many, many years. And, and these doctors, whether it was in ignorance or in willful ignorance, uh, they have betrayed the Lord. They have betrayed the little ones made in His image. And they have betrayed this community. And they need to know deep down in heart this great sin, this great error that they have committed. And I pray that they are broken. I pray they come to repentance and the acknowledgement of the truth whereby their souls may be saved and this evil come quickly to an end in Kissimmee. Can I get an amen? Now today... Brother Chet gave us an encouraging word because, you know, you're out there in the heat and the storm clouds are coming, the lightning is striking, and you're getting dumped on. And sometimes, you know, just standing there holding that sign gets a little, you know, ho-hum, a little hundrums, you know. And, and so Brother Chet gave us a word. And it was in Ephesians 5.11. Can anybody quote that word to me? Ephesians 5.11, Brother Jay, bring it on. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's going to lead to my word here tonight. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 7. We are in the midst of a demonic invasion into Kissimmee, Florida. Now the Bible tells us very plainly that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. But we are wrestling with the demonic realm, Amen. principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. This is what we are up against, and this is what these doctors have invited into this community. They have literally signed upon a paper to unleash hell in Kissimmee, Florida. It's what they have done. And what they have unleashed is what the Bible calls a wolf in sheep's clothing. Can I hear you say that together? A wolf. In sheep's clothing. And our Lord warned us of this kind of deception. 
In Matthew 7, verse 15, he said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. That's right. Amen? <clears throat> Interesting enough, before our Lord and Savior gave us this warning, how many remember Esau? Remember Esau? Esau's fable. Do you know one of his fables? Was a revelation of this truth. This is what he wrote. This is Esau. He said, a wolf found great difficulty in getting at the sheep. Listen. Owing to the vigilance of the shepherd and his dogs. That's why God needs pastors and he needs prophets. He needs shepherds and he needs the hound of heaven. Amen. But one day. It found a skin of a sheep that had been flayed and thrown aside. So it put it on over its own pelt and strolled down among the sheep. Listen, the lamb that belonged to the sheep, whose skin the wolf was wearing, began to follow the wolf in the sheep's clothing so Leading the lamb a little apart, he soon made a meal of her. And for some time, he succeeded in deceiving the sheep and enjoying hearty meals. Aesop's fable and a powerful biblical truth. A wolf in sheep's clothing. And since time memorial, the sons of Adam have been deceived in the demonic realm to mask their evil in virtue. How many know the Apostle Paul wrote something about this in the New Testament? If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians <laughs> Chapter Chapter 11, I believe. Chapter 11. In verse 13, it says this. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. Brothers and sisters, we know something about this enemy. He does not manifest himself as evil. He doesn't manifest himself as the biggest, baddest dude on the block. He doesn't come out of the hiding going, Rah! Rah! <laughs> He comes as an angel of light. You know, it was G.K. Chesterton who made this statement. He said, the modern world is full of Christian virtues gone mad. Let's say that again. The modern world is full of Christian virtues gone mad. And we must understand we are dealing with a subtle enemy who is literally hijacking Christian virtues and in the name of love, in the name of compassion, in the name of tolerance, he is literally killing, stealing, and destroying. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
This is how the enemy is getting into the United States of America to savage this nation and this generation. Well, there's one organization in our day that exemplifies to its core a wolf in sheep's clothing. What does this sign say? Planned Parenthood. Under the guise of providing affordable health care for women, this organization has been captured by the evil one to do his bidding. Jesus made some comparisons about his kingdom, right? What should I liken my kingdom unto? Well, what should we liken Planned Parenthood unto? Most definitely a wolf in sheep's clothing. But what else can we liken Planned Parenthood to? How about this? Rat poisoning. Do you know... The majority of what's contained in rat poisoning is good for the rat. Yep. It's sweet. Yeah. It's just that 10% that kills them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What else can we liken Planned Parenthood to? How about a local rehab center that supports the crack house? I'm going to say it again. They're like a local drug rehab center that supports a crack house. See, that's their sex education programs. It guarantees they're going to have future clients at their death camps. This is what we're up against here in Kissimmee. Well, just a little unveiling, a, a little pulling away of the layers to expose this wolf in sheep's clothing. They are the leading advocate and provider of abortion. Either directly or indirectly, through their sexual philosophy and their abortion practice, one-third of an entire generation has been wiped out by this monstrosity yep. called abortion. 41 years and younger. One third of that generation is gone. Since 1973, over 60 million children made in the image of God have been destroyed and their innocent blood has been shed by the sin and crime of abortion. This is the deadly legacy and the memorial to commemorate Plains Parenthood's participation in establishing the culture of death in the United States of America today. Planned Parenthood is the Walmart of the abortion industry. This makes them a beast of a different stripe. See, you can hurt their abortion practice. Do you know that? You can hurt their abortion practice. You, we can stand out in that street and we can lit, lead women away from their deception to the truth that will set them free. See, if they were an independent abortion mill, that would be wonderful. But they're being propped up by something. Does anybody know what they're being propped up by? What is it? Government funds. Government funds. Government funds. What, what, was it Jay, what you say? They got all these federal grants? So that means that our government is taking your tax dollars and my tax dollars to prop up this wolf in sheep's clothing that are devouring children made in the image of God. You and I are paying for this. We're paying for the destruction of a generation. 
So one of the things that definitely has to be on the table, we have to cut them off the government dole. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want to talk briefly about the roots of Planned Parenthood. How many have ever heard the philosophy called eugenics? <laughs> eugenics. Well, we all know about Charles Darwin. He gave us the brilliant theory called evolution. And we all know where that has led to. But he had a cousin named Francis Galton. And Francis Galton added a racial component to evolution. And he called it eugenics. Well, Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, that was her faith. That was her world view. Eugenics. This is one of her models. More from the fit and less from the unfit. Of course, she was the goddess who decided who was fit to live and who was not fit to live. Mm -hmm. She looked at our minority brethren, now listen, our minority brethren, and called them human weeds. Yeah. My friends, if you have a garden, what do you do with a weed? What do you do to the weeds? You rip them out. You cut them off. You pull them out. There's a reason why, my brothers and sisters, that the majority of abortion mills in the United States of America are in the minority community. Amen. This is not by accident. It's by design. Yes. Why do you think Planned Parenthood is coming to Kissimmee? There is a large population of Hispanics. Mm -hmm. And they are coming here to exploit that opportunity. Right. And so with a smile on their face and the announcement that we are loving, caring people and we are just here to help the poor women of Kissimmee. Well, how are you going to help them? We're going to wipe out their race. That's how we're going to help them. We're going to wipe out their race. And you and I, we're paying for this. Planned Parenthood promotes immorality. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 through 11. Is anybody there? Yep. Yeah. I need somebody to read aloud 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Read it out loud, please. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Keep going. And such were some of you, but you were washed, <clears throat> but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Brothers and sisters, Planned Parenthood believes the problem is the baby in the womb. They have diagnosed the ills of America and they have found that our problem is associated with a baby in the womb of a mother. And they have a solution to that problem. But how many know the Bible has a completely different diagnosis? Amen. <clears throat> See, our problem is not the baby in the womb. In fact, God's word tells us 
That child, that baby, is a gift straight from God himself. Amen. Yeah. So obviously, we, we have a disagreement here. No, our problem is sin. Our problem is fornication. Our problem is adultery. And we are using, see, see, Planned Parenthood has adopted the King David strategy to deal with sin. Do you remember his strategy to deal with sin? When he fell into adultery with Bathsheba? What did he do? He murdered her husband. Surely that will atone for my sin. Surely that will wipe away the consequence of my sin. I committed adultery. I'm guilty before God. What am I going to do? I got it. I'll use murder to atone for my sin of adultery. Did it work for King David? It ain't working for us. Planned Parenthood has never found a sexual expression. It has not fallen down on his knees and worshipped. Right, right. And in their world, listen to me, in their world, the wages of sin is not death. No, that's just an opportunity to visit their clinics. Yeah. Yeah. And believe me, they have many ways to atone for your sin of fornication, adultery, molestation, and pedophilia. All the crimes that you commit will be here for you. We're your friends. We're the wolf in sheep's clothing. And we're going to take it all away from you. If you just give us $500, we'll remove the whole mess so you can continue in your sinning ways and watch hell open up and devour your soul. You know, Planned Parenthood is, is in the business. And business is good. How I many know oh, every business wants to prosper? Every business, what? For money. Wants to prosper. And what does business need? They need what? Customers. They need clients. Amen? And so the best way for Planned Parenthood to increase their business is to create an appetite for their product. Yeah. That's why they love to get into schools and love to get into culture and pass out condoms and talk about their sexual philosophy. It's in the best interest of Planned Parenthood to inspire our children <laughs> to be promiscuous and immoral. Amen. That makes their services golden. Amen. That makes their services golden. But I am here to tell you, Kasimi, all that glitters is not gold. It is not gold. Planned Parenthood is a criminal organization. And not just the obvious crime of murder. I mean, they have been caught bilking taxpayers, defrauding the government, misappropriating of funds, on and on and on. But you know one of their greatest crimes? Besides slaying the innocent for blood money? They have become a protective racket That's right. for child molesters yeah. and pedophiles. We, we have a police officer in here. You know, when you're police officers, they, they, when they're dealing with drug problems, they typically go and find out like where the crack house is at because they know that's where a lot of the drug deals are going down and they could probably catch some criminals. 
Do you know if there's a great funnel, if I had a great funnel right now with all the sexual abuse and the statutory rape and all the molestation and all the pedophiles that are abusing our children, do you know in that gigantic funnel as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, there's a little opening where it all comes to roost. Does anybody know where that place might be? Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. The abortion industry. See, those who abuse our young daughters, who molest our young daughters, who savage our young daughters, and these daughters become pregnant, guess where they're going? They're going to play in parenthood. You know, there was this, this covert survey done by Life Dynamics. How, how many know Mark Crutcher? He had a young lady, listen, he had a young lady pose as a 13-year-old girl telling over 800 Planned Parenthood and other abortion mills that she's 13 years old, that she's in a relationship with an older man, that she is pregnant, and she wants an abortion without her parents finding out. You can listen to these phone calls. They've been recorded. The vast majority of the Planned Parenthoods that were contacted not only said with their mouth, this is statutory rape. They confessed the crime. They knew it was a crime. But then, coach this girl how to lie. How to conceal her age. How to conceal the age of her molester. Now why this wonderful organization who loves women. They're fighting the war against women. Why would this loving, caring organization coach this little girl? To lie about her situation. Do we not understand what is happening here? Because every time that evil, wicked wolf covers that sin and crime, they just enabled these men to continue to use and abuse these little girls over and over and over again. And you and I are paying for this. If you are a police officer, you want to bust up human trafficking, you want to bust up a pedophile ring, you want to stop the abuse against our little girls and daughters, go to the abortion industry. Investigate them. And you'll find all the criminals you're looking for. Because they're there. And they're taking advantage of that system. And Planned Parenthood provides them cover. And enables them. Time and time again. Well, this is the fruit. And I'm just touching the surface, guys. I just pulled just a couple of layers off. There is so much there. But when you invite the root of Planned Parenthood into your community, this will be the fruit. This will come. And I want to end with these words from our Lord. This is Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 
Sem se questionei. Remember Aesop's fable? A wolf found a little sheepskin on the side and decided to pick it up and put it on so he could start munching and so he could start devouring. That wolf has found a little opening here in Kissimmee. And we need some shepherds and we need some dogs to beat back that wolf to rescue God's little lambs and his little sheep that will be devoured. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, you need to know what you are dealing with here. I'm asking you in Jesus' name to rise up. If you would, please stand with me. I want to pray for you. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, you are the great shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Father, you told us that there would be those, Lord, who would be influenced by the demonic realm, that they would be false, and yet they would come to us, Lord, in sheep's clothing, going ba, ba, ba. But behind that ba was a devouring wolf, Lord God. And Father, we see this so clear in this evil organization called Planned Parenthood that under the guise of helping women, they're killing, stealing, and destroying your little children made in your image. Now, Father, I am asking, Lord, that you will raise up faithful shepherds that will take the very rod of God and beat back that wolf Father, to protect your little lambs and your little sheep, my God. And Father, we're asking that you will deliver Kissimmee yes. from this evil. Amen. Father, please do not even let it take root, Father God. Amen. We're asking you to nip it in the bud. Amen. Lord, I'm praying right now that all their plans will come to naught. Father, set your face against that evil and bring it down. Yes that they may never put their hand to touch one of your children to do any harm. Father God, we're asking this in Jesus' name. So encourage the saints here, Lord God, to understand this one truth, that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Father, we trust you for this victory in Jesus' name. And the saints said... Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Thank you very much. Well, it's time to close. And um, Rusty, that was a powerful, powerful message. That was God. Uh, um, I'm just provoked, but it's time to close, so we're going to close. So stand your feet. Tomorrow, 7.30, join us. 7.30, outside the hotel. Uh, so if we give us a final exhortation of the word, we're going to then uh, leave. 7.45 or so, come down here for an hour, then we're going to be coming over to the church, those of you who want to join us uh, to be a part of this meeting that uh, Dr. Littell has invited us to be. Pastor, I want to thank you very much for having us. Would you honor us by coming up and closing in prayer uh, and just praying a pastoral blessing? Thank you for opening your church to us. Thank you for what you're doing in this community. Thank you for being willing to, to take the risks in this day to come against this wickedness and this evil. And we pray that uh, something the Holy Spirit's doing in this place tonight is going to be a blessing to you. So if you just send us off with a pastoral blessing. Just before I do so, 
let me say how grateful I am for you who have taken this great cause. As I sat back, I listened to the speakers, especially one in particular that say that I will die with you. It is my prayer that this church also will join in this great cause. We don't find many minorities that are willing to die for such a cause. But it touched my heart to see individuals like you who are willing to die for a cause. And to God be the glory. Amen. Father, tonight, as your people have gathered together and spoken your words from their hearts tonight, they're leaving this place with one mind. They're united in their cause, this great cause of life. And we do understand that the enemy come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Lord, you have come to give us life. The enemy has come to take life. But tonight we stand in agreement with these great leaders and these people that there's a cause that is worth dying for. That the lives of the unborn will come to fruition. And through their lives, your name will be glorified. I pray for each person tonight, from the great to the least, male, female, who are so passionate about the call that is upon their lives, that they are willing to die for such cause. I ask your blessings upon them. I ask for divine protection upon them. And what the enemy would meant for evil, Lord, turn it for their good in the name of Jesus. And no weapon to form against them. Or even us, Lord, will prosper. Even though it may form, but it will not prosper. Therefore, God will stand as a great army in this very community, lifting our hands to the heavens. And we will say, for Christ we live. For Christ we will die. Go with your people tonight. Give them a good night rest. Until we'll meet again tomorrow, this is a prayer for our hearts. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in Kissimmee. In Kissimmee, you are God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. We believe, we believe that. Greater things are still to be done in Kissimmee. Tape is taping somewhere is better, actually, uh, because you don't have to deal with memory problems. I know exactly how much time I have on that now.